You guys asked for it, so here it is. In front of me, I have two M2 MacBook Pros, both with eight gigs of RAM, one with 256 gigs of storage, the infamous slow SSD, and one with the upgraded 512 gigabyte option, which costs $200 more. Today, we will find out, does the SSD speed really matter when there's no other variables whatsoever? How much of a difference is there? And also, I wanna add in new information that nobody else has tested or talked about, and also give you guys some helpful tips on how to make your base model M2 that has the slow SSD quicker, how to make sure it doesn't slow down significantly like we've seen in other videos. Now I have to be honest and I have to say that I am sick of making videos on this topic and this will be the last one, which is why I'm gonna make it a great one. We didn't want to get into any of this. It's just when we noticed that it was being slow, when we opened it up, we saw it. And then people had so many comments, so many questions, while at the same time, you had other reviewers saying that it doesn't make a big difference in the real world. So of course, we had to test it and follow up. And after that, you guys started asking more questions. Well, how do we make it better? Can you stick with eight gigs of RAM? Now, I believe it is our job as reviewers to do high quality, detailed real world testing to help inform you guys on how to best spend your hard earned money. And as we have been making these videos that you've been asking about, we've made a lot of discoveries, some of which disprove other reviewers' opinions. Now, we don't like any drama, any beef, uh, we just want to do good quality work and make videos that we would want to watch that would help us. We've been doing this for years now. And of course, this stirs up some trouble, but a lot of people are going to be watching these videos and millions of people are going to be buying these MacBooks. Like Apple said, the MacBook Pro is the second best selling laptop out there. So we want to make sure when people are buying them, they know which one they need to buy. Now, as we've been making these videos and following up to thousands of comments and answering your questions, we've made videos like, why is the M2 slower? The ultimate comparison, which is true. And then you guys, along with reviewers, wanted real world proof, because some tech reviewers didn't believe that the SSD matters. It's okay that Apple did it. So we showed it to you guys with analytics open, activity monitor swap data, and comparing to the M1, which is slower, but when you load up the RAM and you're using swap, the M2 MacBook Pro is actually slower than the M1. We compared it to the 14 inch, where when it converted 8K Canon RAW files, the fan couldn't keep up at full speed and the whole system slowed down the CPU and GPU basically shut off to keep itself from going over 108 degrees Celsius. At which point people are saying, all right, well, yes, this is all true, but your titles are just going over the top where it's exactly what is in the video. And of course, everybody else that makes videos also has titles that grab attention because that's how YouTube's algorithm works. I don't know, maybe we're covering these topics in too much detail and too fast. You guys let me know what you think down below. And with all of that said, let's see how much of a difference this makes and answer the question once and for all. As far as the straight up SSD speeds, we have 1361 write compared to 2300 and 1481 read compared to 2740. So just like we told you in our previous videos, if you get the 512, you will get two of those NAND chips with much faster performance. But let's see how much of an impact that makes for real world tasks. I'm transferring a 42 and a half gig video file, which is completely normal for us. A lot of them are actually larger. And as we're nearing the end of the transfer, you see that the SSD is actually writing at about 200 megabytes per second, not the 1300 that we saw. And this is one thing that a lot of reviewers don't talk about, it is SLC cache, where with these SSDs that are cheaper, uh, which are the majority of them, only a portion can write really fast, and then after a certain amount is filled, it slows down. Now with the 512 model, not only are the SSDs faster, which we're actually not maxing them out because our external drive is slower, but the SLC cache is larger, so we could do this whole transfer without slowing down, which is why it took only 23 seconds to do 45 gigs compared to two minutes and 17 seconds. Now that is a massive difference. And some people have lines have said, hey, well, the M2 SSD still transfers faster than the M1, but there's a big caveat. 
you have to have your hard drives filled similarly for it to be accurate. Because if your M1 is filled with a bunch of apps, bunch of programs, it will slow down earlier than the brand spanking new M2 MacBook Pro that only has macOS installed on it. But if you're somebody that's getting along with the base model, you're gonna have it filled up or close to filled up in order to survive on that amount. Now this one wasn't filled up all the way. We have 96 gigabytes of documents on here, which is realistic. That's less than one video project. Or if you go out and you do a photo shoot with raw files, it takes up a good amount of space. And then 58 gigs of apps, which a lot of these are the ones that come with it. Of course, we have Lightroom, we have Photoshop, we have Xcode, Final Cut, nothing excessive. We still have a lot that we did not install. Now, what happens if we just go ahead and delete our PC test folder, which is pretty much all of those documents, and we tried doing the transfer again. Well, that took 32 seconds, much closer to the 23 that the 512 got. And of course the 512 could be faster if we had a faster external SSD. Now this just proves why some people are saying, no, the transfers are quick. They got a brand new machine and they didn't put files on there or programs, it's gonna perform better. But as soon as you load it up, it will slow down significantly as you guys saw. So if you want your base model M2 to work faster, well, don't keep a lot of files on it. Make sure that at least half of it is free. So basically install a couple programs, a few small files and keep everything else external, which is a major bummer because the M1 wouldn't slow down as much. And this brings us to the SLC cache. My only other PCI Express 3.0 512 gig is my Intel 16 inch, uh, which came out a couple years ago. And with that, once the SSDs slowed down, they would still run at about 900 megabytes per second. I should say above that. Whereas with these new machines, even the 512, the SSDs are not as good, which is why they slowed down to about 350 or so for the 512 and then the 256 slows down in the 200 megabyte per second range which is slower than a regular SATA SSD it is crazy slow now with that we have other metrics as well not only sequential writes which is why when we're using swap these SSDs are acting much slower than you would expect them to now I get what some of the Apple apologists are saying and that's that 128 gig NAND flashes aren't really available Available anymore so Apple had to go with a single 256 gigabyte but take a look at this you can get a 256 gigabyte m.2 for 21 dollars it's not the price point that is getting them in supply chain these are readily available and this isn't a sucky one this is faster than what Apple is using and it's TLC not the cheaper QLC and it has a controller and a stick and shipping and profit for Amazon for $21. If Apple had to go away from the 128 gig NAND modules and go with 256, so they only put one in, put in two, make the base model 512 just like Dell is doing with their XPS 13 Plus that has much faster speeds, PCI Express 4, for that kind of base price point. Apple can afford it. And the market price for one of these 256 gig TLC chips is $2.04. Now I wanna run Lightroom as a baseline because with a 16 gig model, we saw that it was almost twice as fast. So before we open up some web browsing tasks like everybody does, let's export these 50 images. As you guys can see, both systems are using close to four gigs of swap. So right now, the only difference are the SSDs. Everything else is identical. The 256 gig model took two minutes to export these 50 images, while the 512 took a minute and 45 seconds. That is a performance difference of 15%. And that is without having anything else open, no web browsing, no other applications, exact systems, only the difference in SSD. Man, back in the day when we would get a new Intel MacBook Pro, 15% would have been an amazing improvement just you know, year after year or two years later, sometimes it was 10%. And here with just an SSD upgrade, 
that's how much of a difference we're seeing. So there you go to those of you guys that say it doesn't make a difference in the real world. And now I'm gonna open just 10 web browsing tabs. I usually use more than that, but we're gonna keep it simple here just like we did in our last video. And I have my Google Drive open, my channel analytics, a YouTube video playing in the background. I have IGN open, electric, just a normal amount of tabs. Unless you guys use way less, just two or three, let me know down below. Let's hit export over here. Now we're using over five gigs of swap on both. And when I'm rendering, I'm usually on the internet, I'm writing some emails, not just sitting there. And of course, usually it's more than 50 photos. So let's check out our responsiveness right now. Let's go ahead and switch over to say my Google Drive, okay. That was pretty similar on both. Let's go to IGN. A little bit faster there on the 512 model. Electric, same thing. Similar there at the last one. The Verge, I would say pretty similar. Oh, interesting. For the YouTube video, the 512 one is running it. This one is not paused, but for some reason it's not playing. All right, it's being stuttery. There you go. All right, so our 512 gig model is done let's wait for the base and bam it is done and guys i'm quite shocked so we have four minutes and 20 seconds for the 512 m2 yes it slowed down dramatically not having enough ram and i believe that the m2 chip needs more ram than the m1 we have higher performance higher bandwidth but the mount isn't enough now with the 256 gig model with eight gigs, this one took seven minutes and 43 seconds. That is almost 80% faster. And the only difference is that one of these has a two NAND chip setup, just like the M1 has, and the new M2 base has a single one that is slower. There is proof that with only 10 web browsing tabs open, we're not going extreme, we are seeing an 80% difference. So yes, this is a big deal. This does matter and people should be upset with this change. Now with the M1, when I did my eight versus 16 gig comparison, and we also had double the storage, we only saw I believe it was like a 10% difference between the uh, eight gig and the 16 gig would double the SSD. And then when we loaded everything up, we didn't do 10 web browsing tabs, we did 25, 20 in Chrome, five in Safari, and I had four pro applications open. And even then the, the performance difference, uh, only then it kind of stretched out to being twice as slow. And that's also with doubling of the RAM in a way, way harder load. Here, we're seeing an 80% difference, that's crazy. Now, for those of you saying that nobody buys the base model, who would do that? What person that wants to do some photo editing would do that? Well, we were quite surprised when we looked at our affiliate analytics, and we saw that from our audience, those that are into tech, those that are doing things like that, almost three times more of them bought a base model compared to buying one that is specced up. Now imagine the average Joe that just goes to an Apple store or Costco or Best Buy. And with that, the base models are the ones that are stocked everywhere. You can't go buy a 16 gig model um, in the store and that takes weeks. So people just pick up what there is thinking it's gonna work well. And it did with the M1, the swap worked great. Now with these M2 MacBook Pro specifically, the base model is number 17 on Amazon top 100 laptop sales charts whereas the 512 option is number 73, far, far away from the base. And those are both uh, kept in stock on Amazon. And with that, the people that are buying one of these, they're people that are interested in tech. They've probably been waiting for a while for this to come out. Not the average Joe that doesn't need performance that randomly chose to buy one because his old one died or something else happened. These are people that are more than likely in the know and they're buying base models. And with the M1 MacBook Air, I've done a bunch of this kind of stuff, video editing, photo editing with web browsing tabs. It performed a lot better over the last year and a half. And now let's export a five minute simple 4K project with just those web browsing tabs open and Final Cut Lightroom is closed. Going back to our web browser here, we're getting stuttering 
with the playback of this video while we're exporting compared to just fine over here. And then going through some of our tabs, let's go ahead and press. You guys saw the difference right there, opening up that one. There you guys go. You guys see it for yourselves. This shows the result of using a single NAND chip with much slower SSD performance in the real world. And bam, right there, the 8 gig 512 model did slow down. It ended up taking two minutes and 50 seconds instead of two minutes and 23 with just Final Cut open. But the 256 gig model took four minutes and 23 seconds. And this is only a five minute clip without anything else open. We don't have Photoshop or Lightroom open, anything like that. So how can we make this better? Well, first off, you could just shut down all of your web browsing tabs, make sure you only have one app open, Final Cut, if you wanna get the best performance. And in that case, they will perform the same. My other suggestion is to use Safari instead. Now we use Chrome because we like it and because most of you guys do as well. Reports came out last month showing that by far, most people use Chrome and only about 9% of people use Safari. I closed Chrome and opened up the identical tabs in Safari instead. And now let's export those same 50 images where previously we saw a difference of 80% with just Lightroom open rendering and those 10 Chrome tabs. All right, the 512 model is finished. It took three minutes and 13 seconds, which is definitely better than the four minutes and 20 seconds, I believe it was with Chrome instead of Safari. But of course that's still worse than the minute and 45 when we didn't have any web browser tabs open at all and just Lightroom. And bam, the 256 gig is also done. It was quicker than with Chrome, six minutes, 49 seconds compared to 743 with Chrome, but it is now more than twice as slow as the 512 model, where before it was 80% slower. So yes, Safari helped a little bit, but the difference is significant. Three minutes, 13 seconds compared to 649 all with the same exact system, the only difference being the SSD uh, and just Lightroom open and then Safari, our final cut is closed. In our old M1 comparison video, we had four pro apps open and 25 tabs, 20 in Chrome and then five in Safari. And then the difference wasn't even twice the speed. And that also had 16 gigs. It wasn't only a storage difference. So this just proves that yes, Apple should not have done this with the SSDs. This is real world use. And I don't know what we would have gotten if I would have had four pro apps open and 25 tabs instead. Swap does matter. And the crazy thing is even the base M1 iPad Air, which has 64 gigs of storage, this thing gets 1,753 read and 2,031 write, faster than the 256 gig M2 MacBook Pro is. And Apple doesn't even give the 64 gig option swap because it wouldn't be fast enough. And then of course you need eight gigs of storage for swap uh, to be able to work. But this SSD is faster on a $600 iPad compared to a you know, $1,300 uh, laptop. Nobody, and I mean nobody, should buy the base model. But unfortunately, millions of people are going to do exactly that, which is why we wanna make these videos to inform people. So please share this video with other people. Now, what should you do? Should you upgrade your SSD? Absolutely, even that makes a huge difference. And if you don't, you need to keep the files off and have an external SSD anyways if you want it to transfer without slowing down dramatically like I showed you at the start. And then upgrading your RAM also helps a ton. For example, under this workload with Chrome, the 16 gig 512, it took one minute and 17 seconds to transfer way faster than with these systems that have eight gigs of RAM, massive difference. But at that point, you're spending $1,700. 
and the 14 inches available for 200 bucks off in a lot of places, including Amazon, we'll have links down below. So it doesn't make sense. So this just shows that this product is just designed to get people to spend more money and then move up to the 14 inch. It is not designed to be a machine that's gonna work great and not slow down a lot because as you guys see, it has some serious real world um, issues for that base model. So we are done, that is it. I think we've proven our case here. This is very unfortunate because we loved recommending the base model M1 MacBook Air in the past. We'll see if the M2 also has these issues and what the temps are gonna be like. So click that circle above if you guys wanna see that video. Check out one of those great ones right over here. This has been Max and I'll see you in the next video.